was going, you know, right here is Cedar Avenue. This is pretty much what I would call the dead center, the heart of Apple Valley, Minnesota. I grew up in Apple Valley. I really, I'm fond of it. Even though I grew up there, a lot of people reject where they grew up. I think it's an awesome place to live. I have family who still lives here. I already did a video on it, but I think it was winter. I wanted to do it again, show it in the fall show some beauty of what's going on here in Apple Valley. And there's a bus station right down here. It's for the red line. It's a direct route basically to downtown Minneapolis. Uh, very slick, also goes to the Mall of America. Then right here you have Target and Best Buy, one of two Targets. I don't know, Apple Valley's awesome. I'm excited to share with you. Again, if you haven't seen it already, Steve from the team grew up here as well. I don't know, let's get it. going y'all my name is jesse lynch and i run the hardest working real estate team in the game we're called to the twin cities and you can check out our website to the twin cities.com but this youtube channel is all about helping you find a place to call home a place to land here in the beautiful twin cities of minnesota today specifically we're talking apple valley where i grew up near and dear to my heart but that's whether you're buying a house for the first time or relocating here from a different city state country planet dimension whatever it is first time home buyers and relocations that's what we do it's what we specialize in it's what we do better than anybody else so if either of those things appeal to you then do us both a favor subscribe to this channel click that little bell to get notified every time we put out a video just like this the best videos anywhere on the internet about living in the twin cities and while i have you here if you wouldn't mind give the video a thumbs up say something say literally Literally anything at all in the comments would appreciate that so so much and I say this every video but I mean it especially if you are thinking about moving to the Twin Cities or if you already live here and you're trying to buy a house get a hold of us we would love to be the ones to help you to hold your hand to assist you through the process relocation a little bit complicated first-time home buyers just a little bit of a learning curve right and that is exactly what we have specialized in so you can go to our website to the twin cities.com we have a contact form there that you can fill out in like 30 seconds or less truly or you can shoot us an email directly to info at to the twin cities.com they lead to the same inbox so it's completely up to you how you do it we just ask that you do a crosswalk don't get hit don't get hit okay that said today's video i already said it we're talking apple valley minnesota it's where i grew up it's a great spot and it is a unique proposition in terms of cost quality of schools just like idyllic lifestyle it's a great cross-section. Obviously, I came out of here and I'm awesome. I'm just kidding. All right, let's dive in. We're gonna meet up with Steve, who also grew up here, talk through, hopefully kinda, you know, get you an idea of what it's like. Right now we are at Keller Lake Park, a spot that both uh, Steve and I have a ton of memories. Uh, I was like super into BMX. Were you, did you, like I, I had a BMX bike. I rode it pretty cautiously. <laughs> <laughs> Just cause I was afraid of getting hurt. Yeah. Same with skateboarding, tried it, uh, oh, wasn't really for me. No, I was, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much guaranteed to get hurt on a skateboard. But yeah, I think I was, I would just rode BMX like all the time wasn't good at it but i rode i like any any every single day it felt like i was mm -hmm. here um and yeah we there's like a little like you know dirt track if you will here there were some jumps a bowl i don't know super fun but anyway this is keller lake over here it's a beautiful area and it's super close to where you grew up super close yeah my i mean my parents house is a 10 minute walk from here so yeah bikes all the time around here perfect spot for that when you're a kid uh, get off the streets a little bit into the wilderness. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot of memories here. Yeah, and Apple Valley as a suburb really kind of started to come into existence probably around like the 70s or 80s. 
So you, the housing stock is probably largely somewhere between 1970 and maybe 2000. Yep. You know, my and 90s homes, my neighborhood's all 90s, my parents, I should say. Yeah. All 90s houses. Yeah, and now my mom lives in, uh, probably still on kind of the opposite side from here, in townhomes that are 2002, you know? So that so, sort of the southeast corner of Apple Valley is uh, like the denser part of, uh, of Apple Valley, more townhomes, more apartments, more condos. And when you sort of look at the, look at a map, there's like commercial cores, mostly along maybe County Road uh, 42 and Cedar Avenue, and, and kind of everything grew out from there. Naturally, it grew from north to south, from the cities down out toward Lakeville. Um, but yeah, when I think when we moved into, when my family moved into the house I grew up in, it was 19, what I was, 86, probably the year I was born, and like, it was the end, right? And so that house was built in 79, and that's very much like what a lot of it was. But now on the periphery, here it's newer homes, still not brand new, but 2000-ish yeah. is pretty new for, or for Apple Valley, for sure. So if we're talking boundaries of Apple Valley, um, on the north side, you've got Egan. On the east is Rosemount, south, is Lakeville, and then the west side boundary is Burnsville. Yeah, which all of which, man, spent a lot of time there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Lakeville was my first job ever. Go to Burnsville Center Burnsville every Center. weekend for like three years in middle school, probably. Yeah. And then in high school, I went to the garage all the time in Burnsville. Sure. Egan is where my mom worked. Rosemount was pretty rural back so, in the day. So what I remember from Rosemount was that was like before Carmike Theater opened, that was like where you saw, oh, yeah. I saw Independence Day with Rosemount Theater. Nice. So, <laughs> yeah, legendary. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and we're we're a little bit removed from the, you know, from like the city center. We're probably third ring suburb is what I would call Apple mm -hmm. Valley. You're probably 25 minutes to downtown Minneapolis, maybe 30. I used to make that commute often in college. Me too. And almost exactly equal distance to St. Paul. Yeah. That's one of the beautiful things about Apple Valley is pretty much equal access to the two. 35W or 35 e Yeah, it splits pretty much right here and it's really easy to get either way. And then the airport, we're close to that as well, maybe 15 minutes or so to the airport. It's funny, as we're, God, we're walking here, it's just memory That's lane, lane dude. Yeah, <laughs> unreal. Um, yeah, this is a beautiful park, actually. The further we walk this way, the closer to Burnsville we get. So, right. <laughs> and the population here is growing, but not super quickly anymore. It's it's so almost completely developed that there's not a whole lot of space left. It's maybe getting a slightly more dense, but a lot of that area that could have been, or that you know that was left, has now been turned into fairly dense, you know, uh, places like the apartments on the sort of southeast side of Apple Valley. It's crunch season, uh, so, you know. We got the flannels on, <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a, it is an awesome day, actually. Uh, like late October, 60 degrees, pretty much perfect. Pardon the crunches, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's growing, but not by a ton anymore. The schools, ever since I was a kid, have been great. My, actually, my family moved from uh, a suburb in the northern metro, I'm not gonna call it out, but down to Apple Valley because of schools um, back in like 1986, and they're still really good. Absolutely, yeah. My mom was a first grade teacher at Southview. Oh, yeah. Shout out mom, she just retired a couple years ago. Shout out yeah. Will. Yeah. Excellent school, <laughs> District 196. Um, three high schools in District 196. So Eastview received an A plus. So by very, yeah, very highly rated school. Uh, that's in Apple Valley. Uh, Rosemount Senior High School uh, gets an A. And then our alma mater, is that what you? <laughs> yeah, Apple Valley High School also yeah. received an A. Yeah, oh, and man. obviously, like, it's not going to be uh, like top five, you know, like elite schools, but it's really, really good. Eastview specifically, it's a much newer campus, so it's like known as being really good, but F Valley created us, yeah. and we're awesome. Uh, <laughs> the middle school game um, varies quite a bit as well. We both went to Southview, right? Southview for elementary, Valley Middle for oh, yeah. middle school. Yeah, yeah, which are connected um, and really close to where we are right now, actually. Were you a crossing guard? 
I was. Yeah. I was a uh, fifth grader. Yep. Yeah. That's really awesome. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you have uh, Falcon Ridge Middle School, Valley Middle School, and uh, Scott Highlands, I think, was served some of it. Maybe more the Eastview side now. Um, and tons of elementary schools, all of which are generally very good. And one thing to note is that the diversity is growing quite a bit. When we went, <laughs> when we were in school, it was not a particularly diverse school. Agreed. And more and more now, I, I turned to my nephew's graduation, who graduated from the same school actually, but it was so much more diverse, mm -hmm. cool to see. And yeah, you're definitely seeing it changed a little bit, but it's still just such a such an awesome spot to be. And while we're still on schools, there is something really unique about Apple Valley. There's a school called the School of Environmental Studies, and it serves I think it's uh, juniors and high or juniors and seniors in high school. Yeah, just the top. Yeah, from um, the entire district, if I'm not mistaken, are have access to that school. I, th I, I actually don't even know if it's even beyond the district, but yeah, for sure, for sure. And this, and I mean, the my, yeah, this is our, you know, this is going on 20 years now. With our, <laughs> my memory and yeah. what things were like there, but um, yeah. very cool. It's also known as the zoo school. It's located on the boundaries of the Minnesota Zoo yep. uh, in Apple Valley. Uh, we both had a bunch of friends that went there. Um, from what I remember my friends describing it as is kind of like a it was, a, it was a much more unique um, style of yeah. learning, where yeah. you kind of learn about multiple disciplines at the same time. Where yeah, it's not you know where really Apple small Valley, class sizes too. I remember. Small class sizes, and I think they stuck together the whole day. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, like um, little pods. It, yeah, it was crazy to hear. It was like what? Yeah, like, it was <laughs> very unique. <laughs> yeah, especially like our school. You know, you had math, science, gym. You know, it was all separated. There, it seemed like it was kind. They tried to like kind of combine. Um, you know, multiple disciplines while uh, teaching these kind of, you know, non traditional environment. Yeah, yeah. And just, uh, you know, it was kind of like, like a hippie school. Yeah. SES is what people <laughs> called it. But yeah, super cool. And I think, uh, yeah, a very unique proposition, mm -hmm. a very special and like kind of one of a kind learning institution, at least in Minnesota. I don't know of anything else like it. You know, for sure. Herpage comes to mind, but that's all arts. Mm -hmm. You know, there's. Just a few of those very unique spots. But with all that said, it's an awesome place to live. Schools are amazing. Uh, it's actually more affordable than you would think. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> median sale price across all home styles is right around 350. And the single family, 350 is almost more of like the barrier for entry. Yeah. Maybe low threes, you can find a single family that's moving ready, but for the most part, 350-ish and above. 400 gets you a pretty nice house here. Absolutely. Yeah, three bed, two bath, kind of minimum, I would say, in that price range, and you know, it just kind of goes up from there. Yeah, and there's huge sort of diverse housing stock, a big variety of homes here. From, you know, the, we had like a split entry, uh, four bed, two bath, or something like that, and something like that from the 70s, if 2,000 square feet might be in that 350 to four range, depending on sort of renovations. But there's some really beautiful homes here as well. There's homes on lakes. And so you can, you know, you see houses up to seven or so. Oh, yeah, 750. My parents live on Lac Levan. I helped some buyers oh, yeah. get a house uh, on that lake this summer. It was in the seven to 750 range. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. It's a, and it's a beautiful lake. It's actually a man-made lake. Mm -hmm. Interesting spot. Um, but yeah, you know, for the big ranges, you might see as high as 800K. Um, and then in the townhome sort of world, townhome condo, townhomes are really probably 250-ish on the cheap end. And then maybe up to four is probably what, you know, mostly what you'll see. So the vast majority of people that live here own the home they live in. It's something like three quarters are owners, one quarter are renters. And, you know, I think you'll see to some degree that there's a pretty, pretty great pride of ownership in this area, especially when I think about median home price and all that and like how great the schools are. It's like, man, pretty good value. Like, obviously we're biased because we grew up here. Right. <laughs> but like, it really it's is good. a great spot. Yeah. yeah. All right, we are going to uh, go for a drive, show you around, you be the judge about the pride of ownership thing, and uh, we'll see you in a sec.
we're in a neighborhood on the north side of Apple Valley, uh, right between Palomino and 35W. Uh, e. E, 35W, yeah. yeah, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, kind of a little bit of an example of um, more interesting topography than yeah. you get in some parts of Apple Valley where you're actually in the valley yeah. part. Um, but also, yeah, just kind of like older, more interesting homes um, than yeah. in some spots yeah i forget who this like there's like a scandinavian dude who made like tons of the houses in like the core yeah right i can oh. never like Olufsen or something like yeah that. something like yeah that. but like it you're getting away from that where everything mm. looks super identical and it's yeah there's actually like moments of like very interesting homes again the topography it's a little more wooded over here it's really cool it's it always you know felt like uh uh, like a totally different place from kind of the section that I grew up in. Yeah, same. Um, you know, but yeah, really, really pretty. And we just thought, you know, why not show this part so you don't just just have kind of that, I don't know, very cookie cutter sort of uh, experience. But we want to talk through pros and cons of living in Apple Valley. We, boy, we labored over these because <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to be subjective objective yeah as people who lived here for so long and still come down here very frequently yeah <laughs> yeah so you know it, it, it's uh yeah it, it, it was a, a bit of a challenge so first things first i think one of the biggest pros that uh you kind of overlook as we lived here like growing up is that you have really good and equal access to both of the cities mm -hmm. so for couples or whatever who have one person works in Minneapolis, one works in St. Paul, like one of the better spots while still being kind of out here in suburbia. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Sort of like Roseville or something. My dad commuted to Minneapolis for 20 plus years. I mean, it's not the best commute, but it's definitely doable. Yeah. Lots of people do it. Less so now, obviously, with work from home and stuff like that. But yeah. That does make the commute a little better, though. For you know? Sure. Yeah. And, and so part of that you have really good highway access you're gonna probably either hop on 35w or 35e or highway 77 mm -hmm. um, but one of the beautiful things about it i think one of the undeniable pros is that none of those actually run through apple valley so the closest thing would be this right over here 35e where i don't know half a mile from it if that you can hear it in the background and that is sort of the, just the northwest border of Apple Valley. Everything else in Apple Valley, it's divided by like a, just a road, right. you know? Yeah, um, so you could be going into Rosemount and really not even notice a difference. Yeah. Whereas a lot of suburbs are kind of like bordered by highways. Yeah, like, and, and, and so it's really quiet, you know? Like where we grew up, it's like highway noise was not really a thing. Not at all. You know, and still isn't. Like there is not a single highway that rolls through there. Mm -hmm. Um, over here is the, the, the loudest, and boy, yeah, it's right. not very loud, you know. These houses are beautiful, by the way. Really, really nice. Yeah, like interesting, you know, wood shake roofs and just like very, very cool architecture over here. Um, a little more money over here, you know. Historically, these were a bit more expensive. Um, but even as now as you go east, it gets even more expensive. Closer to East View, uh, stuff gets newer, right. stuff gets... Uh, more expensive. And speaking of Eastview, uh, another one of the huge, huge pros of Apple Valley is the schools. Yeah. So, and the kind of the combination of relatively low median sale price across all homes and high, high quality of schools. A lot of times when you get in, you know, a top five Apple Valley, District 196, not exactly top five, but in that kind of range, you're getting into the much more higher level median sale price areas. Yeah, almost. Very yeah combined. yeah absolutely it's uh i actually did a video about like best affordable school districts i didn't just like make it up i use like stats mm -hmm. so according to niche.com or uh, greatschools.org and like where they overlapped where across the board they were rated really high but then under or around the median home price of the twin cities and apple valley just barely squeaked by on the affordable end but they were some of the best schools, mm -hmm. you know. The only other spot that I can think of with this combination of really good schools and affordability is Moundsview. 
Yep. But yeah, the, on the north side. I but mean, the houses in Mountain View aren't as nice as the houses here. Agree. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not just us, you know, coming from here. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a much more modest housing stock in Mounds View. Much more like story and a half, older built stuff. Mm -hmm. um, a little, yeah, just a little less, uh, I don't know, idyllic or, or whatever. A little, a little less new. Um, another pro is beautiful outdoor spaces. We're actually this Belmont Park. It's tiny, but it's really pretty over here. Um, and, you know, we were at Keller earlier. There's Long Ridge. I grew up right by Long Ridge. There's Lac La Vaughn Park. But you also have access to one of the coolest regional parks in the Twin Cities, Lebanon. which is, yeah, Lebanon Hills. Yep. Yeah, very ex And then you've got the Minnesota Zoo too, which I mean, I don't know if you count that as an outdoor space, but you definitely could. Um, it yeah. kind of fits the bill. But yeah, Lebanon, having ag that access to Lebanon Hills, definitely. Good. Yeah, yeah we've, we've actually helped people who specifically say they want, you know, access to uh, a regional park or something like a Theodore Worth or Lebanon Hills because they're into mountain biking sure. or something like that. And yeah, they're, they're kind of special places. There's only so many of those in the cities. Um, and so, yeah, to, it basically butts right up to the sort of southern boundary. And it's a, it is a beautiful spot indeed. But yeah, in addition to Lebanon Hills being right there, having clients that have wanted to have access to, you know, amazing parks like that. I've also worked with people who really, really were, you know, enchanted by the fact that the Minnesota Zoo is in Apple Valley. Yeah. Got young kids. My sister's got four little girls. Takes them to the zoo all the time. <laughs> Perfect place. You know, bring kids. You know, have a great afternoon. That type of thing. Get a pass. Yeah. Um, pretty affordable. Yeah, and I think, you know, when I think about like the convenience of that, that actually leads into like the next pro, which is the conveniences in general. It, it is like, it is everything from a store standpoint is in Apple Valley. Uh, there's two Targets, there's Walmart, there's like a Sam's Club, no Costco, no mall. But, you know, it's like it's pretty much everything ever that you would need is in the boundaries of Apple Valley and you just have really good access to all that stuff here. Um, and then I think the last pro that I can think of is like the varied housing stock. Mm -hmm. Like it is a good variety. I mean, even just this neighborhood is a good example. For sure. There's a ranch, a Rambler right here, uh, fairly modest in sort of st structure. And then y'all saw those houses back right, there. Yeah. Pretty nuts, like pretty- like Three minute walk. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, growing up, part of the diversity of Apple Valley is the financial diversity. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there was a pretty good range uh, of that. I don't, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. There's just a bridge over the water. Beautiful. Um, but yeah, th this, is a, this is a really pretty park over here. Just a cool area, cool little section right here. But yeah, back to the varied housing stock. You like you'll be bumping shoulders with people in a huge variety of sort of uh, income brackets and all that, which in general I think is good. I just think it's good to be as a kid. I think it's just a positive overall. So with the economic diversity, just the diversity kind of growing in general, all good things. One of the bigger cons, in my opinion, is just the kind of general uh, you know, suburban. Lawness, for lack of a better word, I guess. Yeah, uh, it is very, very suburban. Yeah, and growing up, I that was one of the probably greatest, uh, biggest contributors of angst is like, it's just so, <laughs> so boring totally. here, man. You know, but like in retrospect, I'm like, that's probably good. It was boring in, a, in an overall positive way. Absolutely. Peaceful, very good place to grow up. But yeah, it's not that exciting. I mean, we both live in the city, so it's different strokes, <laughs> yeah. you know, but, um, and part of the, yeah, part of the reason is that it's just, yeah, a little bit more of an interesting lifestyle from, in our opinions. But. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna sort of experience that uh, in a lot of suburbs, mm -hmm. but here it is cranked up, you know, yeah. that just, <laughs> and part of that is like on all sides of it are other suburbs. Exactly. You Hard know? to distinguish between <laughs> Rosemount and Egan in some cases. Yeah. Not to say that it's not beautiful. I mean, with the surrounding that we're in right now, yeah, very, very nice, but a little bit bland. Yeah. Bland for sure. I think another con for me is that it's, you know, it's basically fully developed. There's a few little spots 
like where things are going in, like at a golf course. Yeah. That golf course just got kind of like ripped up, and now there's putting villas in there. Um, but it's not that big of a piece of land. No. There's not really that much room to grow. And I think that actually leads into the other con that you were talking about, where basically, if you want a new build, yeah, this ain't really the spot. Exactly, yeah. If you're in the market for a new build, if you do are in like the higher, higher bracket, you know, 900,000 plus to a million, there's just not gonna be that, really any uh, options in Apple Valley. Um, which is, you know, if that it's not a con for everyone, but if that, you know, if that's the, where you're looking, yeah, then it's just not really gonna be an option. Yeah, for sure, that sort of luxury end, the new build end, not really the spot. Yeah, luxury and new build, I would think more, probably looking more of a Lakeville kind of situation. Mm -hmm. um, but that's even a little bit further out. So I think another con that I almost forgot about until I was looking at an aerial view is that there's like a gravel pit off mm. County Road 42 <laughs> and Johnny Cake. Uh, it's kind of weird. It's just like this random sort of expanse where you're like, why is there nothing here? Because <laughs> there is, it's just kind of hidden and it's pits. Yeah, you know? not visually appealing. Yeah, someday I suspect that will get developed, but for now, likely. for now it's being used as basically, you know, fill and or uh, sort of like concrete uh, manufacturing or whatever. Um, yeah, that that seems fairly nitpicky, but, <laughs> but it's weird. And then the last con for me, I think there is an argument to be made that there is maybe too much commercial space in Apple Valley. We need two targets. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think generally speaking, they do do a pretty good job of kind of keeping it more or less condensed into commercial district, yeah, you know, residential district. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a lot, you know, 42 and, and Cedar. It's like from there, just quite an expanse of, uh, of commercial spaces. But yeah, you know, again, just a yeah, little nitpicky. A... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe but, a soft con yeah. on that one, but. And it is fairly, um, cookie cutter in terms of its suburban amenities, you know, not too much interesting cultural uh, food or events or anything like that going on. Classic kind of run of the mill suburban. For suburbs, yeah. yeah, but all right, that's all for that. We do have some other spots that if you like what you see here, maybe consider these other places. So we're gonna talk about that in just a second. Right now we are in a neighborhood right by Eastview High School. It's a much newer part of Apple Valley. When we were really young, this wasn't here at all, but it's it's really nice. And there's like different varieties of like this area. This almost sort of northeastern quadrant, I guess, of Apple Valley has almost had many iterations like sort of the center. You know, where there's sections where it's 70s, 80s homes, yeah. sections where it's 90s, 2000s homes. This looks very 2000s to me. Very 2000s, -y. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and uh, it's a it's a nice spot. You obviously have access to the Eastview High School here, and it's just a fairly sought after school. I feel, like, I feel like in sports, other than like wrestling, they always beat mm -hmm. Apple Valley. Definitely <laughs> not wrestling though. Yeah, 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 <laughs> <laughs> true. Um, but, yeah, so we're talking for fans of, if you watch this channel, you know that we have a section where we like to say, if you like what you see here, maybe consider these other spots. Before we do, I just wanna say, if you're interested in uh, moving here, if you are moving here, if you already live here and you're trying to buy a house here, get a hold of us, we will crush it for you. Absolutely. You know, nobody will work harder for you than we will. We uh, got this thing down, this whole relocation thing, first time home buyer thing and really any any kind of real estate help that we can give you, happy to help. So go to our website, To The Twin Cities. We have a contact form there that you can fill out in like 30 seconds or less, or you can shoot us an email directly to info at tothetwincities.com. They'll lead to the same inbox, so it's completely up to you how you do it. Just ask that you do. Um, and 
as always, subscribe to the channel, click the bell to get notified, that whole thing. So let's dive in, no further ado. What are some spots to consider if you like, you know, the proposition of Apple Valley? I think I'll start with the easy ones, the ones that are right by it, yep. you know? So it, for one, if you wanna be in Independent School District 196, uh, basically you have parts of Egan, parts of Burnsville, parts of Lakeville, and parts of Rosemont that all sort of attend there. Mm -hmm. um, and all of Apple Valley. Yeah, 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 all of Apple Valley, yep. Um, and so those, just in general, lifestyle could be fairly similar. I guess we're on left. Uh, <laughs> it could be fairly similar. Um, and like we were mentioning before, they almost kind of bleed into each other. In true. Way. I mean, yeah. The dividing lines are not super clear to just the, you know, the average person. That's true. And yeah, you know, we went to school with kids who were yeah, from all, all of those burns, things. So, yeah. You know. And you didn't realize like, oh, okay, that's maybe a little bit unusual but yeah it's uh th those are kind of the obvious ones yeah. um similar in median sale price mm -hmm. similar in age of lakeville so yeah if we're gonna break those down right i think burnsville is the oldest you yep. uh, most opportunity for like a mid-century home maybe in burnsville egan is kind of the biggest and most industrial um Maybe not biggest, Lake was probably biggest, but the most industrial, the most like trucking companies, tons of trucking companies there, <laughs> um, and warehouse space and stuff in Egan. And Lakeville is the, the newest. It's got the most new build, it's a beautiful area, like beautiful uh, topography and geography and all that. And it tons, so if, like we said earlier, if you want that like luxury new build home, yeah. Lakeville is gonna be the spot out of all those places. Um, and then Rosemont is the the most rural still. Yep. Honestly, it's just like least developed. Yeah, it's just out there, you know. Um, but yeah, all like within their own right. We're pretty close to Rosemont at this point, mm -hmm. and you know, there's great housing stock over right over here, and yeah, you can have access to something like Eastview, and just in general, the same school district. So those are like the most obvious ones, right? If you're just looking at the map, what are the closest ones? Uh, District 196 for schools, that that's you know, a high priority. Um, if you're thinking kind of a little more outside the box, similar in terms of good quality schools, probably more or less equal distance away from the cities on the north side, in my opinion, Blaine is kind of where you're going. Yeah. Similar in terms of size and uh, population, Blaine's probably a little bit bigger than Apple Valley, I would guess. Yeah, if I had to guess, yeah. Yeah, but similar, um, similar in terms of age of the homes as well. Yeah, true, um, true, yeah. This, the older ones, yeah, true. Uh, and then, yeah, very, very uh, high rated schools, um, tons of commercial, you know. Also kind of like we were talking before, I'd say almost equally, uh, just kind Insulated? of like, well that, and also just like the bland suburban. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Like almost characterless. True. Still nice, but. Yeah, it's like. Not a lot of identifiers. Yeah, I think as somebody who grew up here, you're like, why would I live in Blaine? Yeah. Like it's the same thing. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, Blaine schools aren't quite as good. Mm -hmm. Still generally pretty good. Yeah, Blaine's schools aren't quite as good, but a lot of the lifestyle aspects are very, very similar. Um, again, the housing stock and all that. But if the schools are of utmost importance, then I would say consider Moundsview. Yep, very uh, close to Blaine. Yeah, sure. Uh, similar in terms of you know, distance to Minneapolis and St. Paul. I hope, I'm glad that guy's um, lawnmower is electric. But <laughs> I, I hope it didn't absolutely destroy the audio. Um, yeah, yeah. Moundsview, uh, we were mentioning before, not quite as nice, I guess. Uh, yeah, like the, the homes are smaller, the homes are like older, a lot of like post-war, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and yeah, it, and the schools though are really good, top 10, like according to Niche, top 10 schools, and generally lower than median home prices. So mm -hmm. you're gonna have an option for bigger homes in Apple Valley, but if you're just looking for that school and that affordability, Monsu could be a really good option for sure. Um, and then, okay, last ones, kind of clumping them together. It's <laughs> we're we're kind of looking for something bland, really <laughs> suburban, but that like by all accounts, great place to live, mm -hmm. great place to grow up, something like that. And I'm kind of clumping these three together: Arden Hills, Shoreview, and Vadness Heights. 
We have videos on all three of those, so check those out. They're, by all accounts, really nice suburbs, mm -hmm. but not that exciting. Right. Kind of a little bit characterless. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't know exactly how I would describe Badness Heights to a stranger, but yeah. other than, yeah, nice suburb. Yeah, like a gen, yeah, like middle of the road, <laughs> pretty nice suburb. Um, but yeah, that's all we got for the for fans of, I think that's a pretty good blend. We're actually helping somebody right now buy here in Apple Valley. Mm -hmm. And you know, we grew up here, so it was like, cool, let's do a video on it. Such a good we spot. Love it. Yeah, you know, if that isn't painfully obvious <laughs> by now. Um, but yeah, appreciate y'all watching. Say hi to Steve in the comments. Take See care. See you in the next video.